This is MTG Burgeoning, and in this video we are going to showcase the 10 best plane chase planes for creature-centric decks. Plane Chase debuted in 2009 as a Magic the Gathering game variant. A second Plane Chase set was released in 2012, and a subsequent Plane Chase anthology was then released in 2016, which offered various reprints of the planes and phenomenons created from the two previous Plane Chase products. More than a decade passed without any new additions to the Plane Chase format. That was until the Commander 2023 March of the Machine pre-constructed EDH decks were released, which produced a total of 20 new Plane Chase planes. At the time of this video's upload, there are a total of 103 different planes in Plane Chase. But not all planes are created equal. Here I'm going to tell you the 10 best planes for creature-centric decks and why. When you planeswalk to Lit Jara, or at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 2-2 blue shapeshifter creature token with Changeling. Note that a creature with Changeling is every creature type. Whenever chaos ensues, choose a creature type. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control of that type. This plane serves a tribal build very well, as each turn you add a creature of your preferred tribe to your side of the battlefield. And if chaos ensues, then you put a plus one plus one counter on each of them. A turn one revealed of Lit Jara can tilt the battlefield into your favor before you even play a land card, especially if your tribal build is strong with creature synergies like slivers or zombies. Note that this effect triggers at the beginning of each of your upkeeps after its initial reveal, so you will be contributing to your board state peripherally through this plane. Litjara has benefits in non-tribal creature builds as well, particularly in decks optimized to create oodles of creature tokens, or in aristocrat-themed decks where the shapeshifter creature token serves as sacrificial fodder to various death triggers. Each turn, Lit Jara adds a creature around which your creature-centric build can utilize. Whenever you planeswalk to the Great Airy, and at the beginning of your upkeep, Bolster 3. To Bolster 3, you choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures you control, and put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Whenever chaos ensues, choose up to one target creature you control, and up to one target creature an opponent controls, and those creatures fight each other by dealing damage equal to their power to the other. At the beginning of your upkeep, as long as there are one or more creatures on your side of the battlefield, one of them is going to get bigger through the addition of three plus one plus one counters. This becomes a numbers game, as the added plus one plus one counters makes your creatures more threatening by making them bigger beyond their intended power mana curve. Through pre-deciphered combat math during your turn, you will identify which opponent's defense is weakest and attack them with your bolstered creatures. Note that there are several cards that synergize with plus one plus one counter themes, which makes the Great Airy a worthy selection to your creature-based build. Well, whenever your team attacks with exactly two creatures, Valor's Reach gives those creatures double strike until end of turn. Whenever chaos ensues, untap up to two target creatures your team controls. If it's a main phase, then there is an additional combat phase after this phase, followed by an additional main phase. Don't worry about the presence of the words your team on this plane. Like any card that refers to your team or you and a teammate, here, this battle bond callback just means you. And when you attack with exactly two creatures, they gain double strike until end of turn. Early game creatures on your side of the battlefield can become quite threatening if you reveal Valor's Reach from your planar deck, particularly if there are any peripheral tribal synergies between or among them. Note that the pair of attacking creatures needed to trigger this plane's double strike enablement do not have to attack the same opponent. Combat math becomes your friend here, as you can pick and choose who these two double striking creatures are attacking. Since you're playing with a creature-based deck, there will be more options standing behind these creatures if they fall during combat, making the mantra next pair up much more meaningful, and it's all thanks to Valor's Reach. 
At any time you could cast a sorcery, Talon Gates allows you the option of exiling a non-land card from your hand with X time counters on it, where X is its mana value. If the exiled card does not have suspend, it gains suspend. When a card is suspended, at the beginning of its owner's upkeep, they remove a time counter from it. When the last is removed, the player casts it without paying its mana cost, and if it's a creature, then it has haste. Whenever chaos ensues, remove two time counters from each suspended card you own. There are various ways in Magic to cheat creatures into play from your hand, library, and graveyard, but Talon Gates provides an outside-the-box approach to getting creatures onto your side of the battlefield. There are numerous cards in Magic that remove time counters for the purposes of putting your suspended creatures onto the battlefield ahead of their time curve. Entering the battlefield with haste should not be overlooked, which makes Talon Gates a formidable card to pair alongside your creature-centric deck. Kawashi has a static ability that gives modified creatures you control trample, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, you draw a card. Any equipment or auras attached to a creature, or any counters on it, results in a creature being modified. Whenever chaos ensues, distribute three plus one plus one counters among one, two, or three target creatures you control. Note that Tawashi will trigger for each creature you control that deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker. This is not a one or more creatures ability. Tawashi needs a little help in order to realize its trample enablement and card drawing benefits by modifying your creatures. Although it may prove difficult to attach equipment and auras to each creature you control in a dedicated creature build, there is no shortage of ways to put plus one plus one counters onto your creatures. Providing trample and a card drawn trigger to each creature you control are worthy reasons to consider adding a plus one plus one counter sub theme to your creature centric deck, as well as adding Tawashi to your planar deck. When you planeswalk to the Maelstrom and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent card, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you reveal the card but did not put it onto the battlefield, put it onto the bottom of your library instead. Whenever chaos ensues, return target permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. More often than not in your creature-based builds, you will either put a land or a creature into play through the Maelstrom. Putting additional lands into play helps to ramp your mana, which, in turn, leads to casting your creature spells ahead of curve, while putting creatures into play makes your side of the battlefield even more threatening. Note that the Maelstrom's put-into-play-for-free ability triggers immediately once you reveal it from your planar deck. If you reveal this plane on your first turn, and if the top card of your library is a permanent, then you are going to put that onto the battlefield. And if that permanent is a powerful creature or a valuable utility option, then you begin the game so far ahead of your opponents that they may never be able to catch up. That's the power of the Maelstrom. The Western Cloud prevents all damage that would be dealt to creatures and planeswalkers you control. Whenever chaos ensues, create three tapped treasure tokens. They each deal one damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Note that all damage is prevented, and not just combat damage. This plane provides a powerful advantage for creature-based decks. When planned around strategically, the Western Cloud affords you the option of casting various mass direct damage spells that deal damage to each creature, which, in turn, should remove your opponent's creatures from their sides of the battlefield, but has no effect on yours. This allows an easy path to victory through blockerless combat. If your side of the battlefield is teeming with mass keyword-enabling abilities, such as Trample, Vigilance, and Flying or Reach, then you may be unstoppable in combat, as well as defensively impervious to your opponent's attempts at combat. The Western Cloud offers a layer of protection for creature-based builds that should considerably tip the battlefield in your favor. Whenever a creature you control attacks a player, for each other opponent, Karasha Foothills allows you the option of creating a token that's a copy of that creature that is tapped and attacking that opponent. These tokens are exiled at the beginning of the next end step. Whenever chaos ensues, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. If you do, Karasha Foothills deals that much damage to target creature. 
Note that this myriad-like ability is granted to each of your attacking creatures. Also note that the legend rule still applies, and as a result of this plane's trigger, if you control two or more legendary creatures with the same name, you choose one and the other is put into your graveyard. If you do not control any legendary creatures, and you attack an opponent with your entire army, then each other opponent is going to have to defend against token copies of your entire attacking army as well. Depending on the tribal synergies or quality of creatures on your side of the battlefield, Karasha Foothill's creature token producing trigger can end games very quickly. When you planeswalk to Grove of the Dream Pods and at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Whenever chaos ensues, you return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. This plane puts creature cards onto our side of the battlefield through its static upkeep trigger or by beating the odds and rolling chaos. A turn one reveal of Grove of the Dream Pods from your planar deck can propel you so far ahead of your opponents by immediately putting a creature into play. Your side of the battlefield continues to grow at the beginning of each of your upkeeps thereafter as you add more and more creatures to your board state. It will not take long before the table tips completely in your favor, particularly with tribal decks that sport synergistic creatures like goblins and humans, or for tribes with creatures with mana-intensive casting costs like dragons and Eldrazi. The Chaldea has a static ability that gives creature spells you cast from your hand Blitz 3 which means that if you cast a spell for its blitz cost, it gains haste and, when this creature dies, draw a card. The blitzed into play creature also is sacrificed at the beginning of the next end step. Whenever chaos ensues, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Note that blitz is an alternative casting cost, and cost reductions apply to alternative casting costs as well. This means that any tribal-specific casting cost reductions, or generic creature casting cost reductions, apply to the blitz cost of your creature spells. It is very reasonable to reduce this blitz cost down to 2, 1, or even 0 mana. Imagine paying 0 mana to cast any creature spell in your hand. Remember, the blitzed into play creature has haste, so you can attack with it the turn it comes into play. Also note that the blitzed into play creature has a card drawing death trigger stapled to it, as well as a beginning of the next end step self sacrifice trigger that ensures it dies and puts a card into your hand. The casting cost reduction, haste enablement, and card draw abilities of the Chaldea make it the most powerful plane for creature centric decks, and it should be the number one consideration for any creature-based builds. Do you agree with the planes on this list? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and tell me which planes would make it into your top 10 list. This is MTG Burgeoning, a yo channel for all things magic. <laughs>